What up, Jay? All right, bro. Hey, man. Hey, hey, hey. Jay, don't kick my butt too bad today. <laughs> Listen, bro. You the king of education, man. <laughs> right? I I got on you. I'm taking my watch off and putting my Apple Watch on this time. Do, do your thing, bro. <laughs> I got on you a couple months ago because I feel like sometimes you'd be on here wasting your time. <laughs> preaching stuff to people, bro, that they just are not ready to absorb. But when it comes uh -huh. to the credit game, uh -huh. that's where you draw the line. Okay. This is where this is where you go, I'm not going to teach this because you're not ready for it. Well, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. And this is the route that I've taken when it comes to credit, credit repair, credit education, blah, blah, blah. Because I have a decent sized platform across social media. Mm -hmm. I can big dog people. A lot of people don't know that you did radio. I see the people talking about your voice. They like your voice. They don't know that you do radio uh -huh. and all of that stuff. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, I can big dog people and keep them beneath me or I can bring them up to where I'm at mm -hmm. in the form of responsibility and education. I can give them my time. I can give them my knowledge and let them do with it what they will. Now, you will educate people on using brokerage accounts. You are putting out real estate information. You are always giving away the dopest game, by the way, bro. So keep doing your thing. But this is where you draw the line. My question to you is why? Why do you as far draw as credit? Line here? Yeah. Um, because I don't leverage credit. That's not that. But that's not the, that's not the, that's not it. Because yes, it you is. Don't because, because, credit, don't, you me, don't know about it. And it doesn't mean that other people don't need it. So you're doing a Dave Ramsey thing. No, because because I, I believe that whenever I try to figure something out of whether or not I should give people information, um, a lot of times I have to be very, very careful with how I do it. Because if you go out and you kill yourself or you suffer as a result of it, I believe that I would be responsible for that. Right. And so I have to manage people. Along with, like, even when I do coaching sessions, I manage their character. I, I force them to have to face a lot of other things other than just telling them how to get to the bag because it has to be all-encompassing. It's all, it's going to be either you get it all or you get none of it. And so a lot of times when people use credit, they're being communicated to wrong. And so they would take some of the information that I would give them, and then they would leverage that to put themselves in a bad situation because there's so much misinformation out here about how to use credit effectively. And so I can't just give them the game. I got to bring them along. I got to understand the people's needs. But on You can't bring them along if you're not using it right either. See, you, you so don't how, how am I using it wrong? Tell me how I'm using it wrong. Because you don't use credit. So, for instance, right, you got the Chase Sapphire card, right, or Sapphire. Well, technically, I do use credit, but I don't use it in a way that most people use it. Yeah, you're right. You're right, man. I mean, here's my thing. You don't use it like that because you don't need to use it like that. But you will discuss the necessary features of using it properly, i.e., you say, don't use credit, but then you tell people you need good payment history. You need good credit aid. You need to have a good mix of credit accounts. You, mm -hmm. you give them all the stuff, but then you don't, you don't, you don't make the connection for them, bro. So, so what is the connection that they need to make? Them. You are more, you can make the connection for them. No, I can't because I don't get on your platform like that. You hear you right now. You, you and I will have these conversations, right? Yeah, we have them offline, but we don't have right. them online. But the people who need it, I don't need it. I already got. I know you don't need it. Cards, I got all my chase. Cards. I got everything I want, right? And I know how to use it effectively. Let me let me run something by you. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had financial trouble or credit trouble? Ever? Credit cr credit trouble or financial trouble? It's two different things. Yeah, you ever owed anybody money? Have you ever owed any? I have. Ten years ago, mm -hmm. I had a four hundred and twenty credit score. Yeah, I lost everything in two thousand eight. I lost everything. everything. Right? Yeah, I got my cars repossessed and all of that. How did you get back on your square? What do you mean? Did somebody did, did anybody look at you and go, "Oh no, nah, he already messed up the game, bro"? Uh, I'm gonna leave him where he at. He ain't ready. Mm -hmm. Or well, did you go seek out the necessary help in order to pull yourself along, bro? And now you've got mm -mm, no, 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 no. So let me tell you. Let me tell you how I did it. Let me tell you how I did it. Well, one of the things that I understood also was that being married gave me more power because I was willing to walk away as far as like in 2008 when everything had went bad. I was willing to walk away from everything because I was then able to leverage my wife's name in order to do it more effectively while I was still building myself up. Right. But then at the same time, it wasn't really that big of a deal because I didn't have to do anything because I then divested myself from the idea of using credit altogether. That's so then I said, I said that I was going to build it from scratch without needing credit 
um, in order to continue to build wealth, which then allowed for me to take advantage of a lot of other opportunities because I didn't have to pay the interest that everybody else paid. And I wasn't, what it forced me to do was re-educate myself about what success looks like, right? So for, I'll give you an example. A lot of people, they'll go out and they'll purchase a house. And then there's a lot of misinformation out here about how, okay, purchase the house and then you continue to gain the equity. You pull the equity out of it in order to go and purchase the new house. You continue to let somebody else pay for it, so on and so forth. But part of that problem is that most people don't understand exactly what the true cost of home ownership is. And so when there's any tumultuous time within the market, right, or um, the bank then calls in that loan, a lot of these people go completely broke because they don't understand the fact that the rules apply differently depending on what the circumstances is inside of the economy. And also when the interest rates are starting to go up, you're going to be in trouble. Right. A lot of people not edu educating people as, OK, well, you can get all of these different properties. But then at the same time, if you start to have some vacancies or location, you did it the wrong way or you're trying to flip in the wrong area or you starting to have problems with a tenant, and you have to carry that cost out of your own pocket. They start to find themselves in a difficult situation. We also seen that happen during the pandemic. Right. Because the rent moratorium kicked in. A lot of the landlords started suffering. I knew some people that actually lost their properties. And then they had deals with other people and everything started falling apart. So when people have these conversations, they don't have them in a vacuum. They have them, they have them based off of what the popular subject is to be similar that they had in the trucking industry. They said all of the, all of the pros, what sounded good. They said none of the cons. They telling these people that they're making a lot of money in real estate when in reality, they just over cash flowing and they don't even have enough money for the repairs if a tenant called and said that something broke down. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, but that's, but that's so, due to over leveraging in every way, right? So but most people getting into real estate is over leveraged. Right, over leverage, right? And that's, I'm gonna give you that argument, but let's talk about the basic people, bro. Basic people, right? Mm -hmm. We have to, we, and I'm talking about those of us who have made it to a certain level. Um, we've gotten out of the muck and the mire. Now we up here, we live in a decent life or a good life or whatever the case is. We make enough money to live that cash life and live good. Mm -hmm. But what about the people who are trying to make that climb? Where are they gonna get their information from? Here's the decision I made, right? I can, either let the scammers and the schemers take over the world or I can do my very level best to put out a product that can be service first and everything else after that, put out information that's going to be truth and logic and let everything else after that come and see if I can combat the system a little bit. Mm. See, people who follow me understand one thing. I'm not getting, and we're going to have a credit repair conversation too in a second. I'm not guaranteeing you should. However, what I will do is I'll give you the information that I have and try to teach you how to use it effectively and try to teach you how to use it in a way that's going to be um, pragmatic, right? So if you can use credit in a pragmatic way, like you said, bro, you can you can get free money. Why yeah, you I can. Do but but see, they don't level best to teach people not even educated how to budget. To understand what you mean by when you say free money. Because everything comes. Let me let me go from the basic beginning, right? First of all, you teach them the basic principles of money. Mm -hmm. And that's what you do. You teach them the basic principles of money. You let them know that they need discipline. Right? No man no man and, left behind. <laughs> and no man left behind, man. You have to, if that's the way you're going to live, and that's what you said, right? When I told you you was wasting your time on telling men how to be men and trying to tell these modern women out here how to be uh, softer women, how to be more feminine, that is, they're just, they're as not ready for that as they are not ready for the finance game but you put that information out there you do yeah. give them the opportunity to absorb that from you and do with it whatever the hell you're gonna do with it mm -hmm. this has to be the same way bro because guess what if you don't put it out there and i don't put it out there it's still being used we still out here we not still necessarily out here though thousands of dollars for free not necessarily though and the reason why that's not necessarily true though this is okay so let's say i start to put the, i start to have certain conversations and i put it out there like just on a public platform like this, right? A lot of times what you do is you put the seeds out there that then force them to start doing a little bit more research. And then what happens is people will say, well, you know what? I need to tap in with you offline or I need to tap in and start getting more information. And then you can start having those deeper conversations. But you got to you gotta take into consideration that it'd be pe new people every day that come in and tune in. Is people that's that what the, that's it's, what the video library is. But for. it, but it's, but it's, but they don't all go off of that. They go off of the most recent thing that you talk about. And so, you know, when I'm when I'm considering the audience, I'm considering the 
the people that are the, the newest to the information along with the people that may have, you know, a little bit more information or they may be a lot, a lot farther along in their journey. But I can't forget about the dude that's at the beginning because if he find himself in a pitfall trying to eat meat when he should be eating baby food, that that then falls on my shoulders as a as a as a person that is given information. I, I don't I don't They're feel going to go get the information anyway. They not. They are. They you, not. You're wrong on this one, bro. They and not. I'm telling you, you're wrong. Several hundred thousand, thousand followers strong. You wrong. Mm -mm. I'm telling you. I've dealt with the ones that hey, bro. I heard this. Heard that. Hey, hey, pimp, back up. Back up. But you but they know. but but I don't have that. On my, no, I don't want that on my rap sheet though. If they're gonna go and get the information, then they then take responsibility for the state that they in. Most of the people that roll with me, they roll with me because they understand that I'm I'm never gonna tell them something that's gonna hurt themselves. And so when people stick with me, and that's why I'm cool with slow growth. I'm not. I, it, it's easy to give people the game and tell them the thing that I know what they want to hear, and it be chock full of information. They come back to it. They subscribe, they blow up the platform even more than it already is. And then, you know what I'm saying? I become more successful as a result of it. The problem with that for me, though, the problem with me with that for me, though, is that I'd rather have the slow growth and people rock with me based off of my character so that they know that I'm bringing them along the right way. And then they tie it in with me instead of being tied into just the information that I'm giving them. And the reason that that's important is because when people know that you're doing things the right way or when people know that you're giving them the right type of t right type of information when they're ready for it, they'll take the, the, the harsh criticism. They'll take the issues. They'll take the problems. They'll take whatever it is that you're dealing with. And they'll even be willing to go along slower in order to get to the successful spaces versus you telling them what they want to hear. And then they go out and they kill themselves. as a re Some people kill themselves as a result of it. Now, if you leave and you go and get the information and you go listen to somebody that's not best for you, I guarantee you, you're going to come back to me and then you're going to get it the right way. But more importantly, I, I can't just give information because information without information without wisdom is dangerous. So you just that knowledge, you knowledge without wisdom is dangerous. It is one of the most okay. dangerous things that you can do for, for a person. So then let's let's case in point. OK, so you just kind of made my point. You will post videos of mm -hmm. your real estate developments in mm -hmm. the holes dug so you can get your footings. Bro, I build houses. I know exactly where, where, yep. you know, what parts you're in the process. You'll do all of this and then you'll say, but I don't go out and get any loans. I do everything cash. Uh -huh. So you just eliminated. 99.999% of the audience that actually watches you from being able to participate and even follow the game. That's you not true. Because they it's don't not have true. an avenue or entree into that. It would take people 10 years of doing nothing but saving just to get to the point where they can even look at a spot like you. That's not true. Now. That's not true it's because, it's, because it's, all, it's all encompassing. See, the thing about it is that I don't just talk about real estate, right? I also give you the game on how it is that you need to level up from a professional perspective. I also give you the game on how it is that you need to minimize your lifestyle. I also give you the game on how it is that you need to level up when it comes to looking at things from a business perspective. Your marriage. But your you're doing it all at once, though, Anton. You're still right. doing it all at once. But but here's so there the, is no actual blueprint to follow. They just have to be able to go back and look at some of the stuff that you dropped from a year ago, a year and a half ago. I do the same thing. I'm gonna give you all of the game, but it's mm -hmm. up to you to go back in the library and check out step one. If but no, but no, but see, but real, 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 real. you got to remember, me building houses is a new thing. That's a brand new thing. I've never built a house except for me just starting this but year. Now, now I'm two hundred thousand dollars cash into a bill. But 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 here's the thought. thing: in order for you to get into the game, the barrier to entry is a lot easier because I'd rather you spend you go into the right spaces, spend thirty thousand dollars. As far as to buy land, then to spend fifty to a hundred thousand dollars putting putting twenty percent down on a half a million dollar property, or putting three and a half percent down and then paying PMI, right? So what I'm doing is I'm experiencing it and then sharing the information on all fronts, not only just what it is that I've already done, but as I continue to mine out and as I continue to understand the game, I'm able to go through the pitfalls give you the information on how it is that you're able to do it more effectively than I did it because I made the mistake so that you don't have to, but then you just have all the information in order to make an informed decision 
in addition to the lessons that come along with budgeting, in addition to the lessons that come along with what careers you need to be, you need to go into in order to get a bigger shovel, in addition to the lessons that come along with how you need to manage your money more effectively. So it's all encompassing. And I would never tell nobody to do anything that I didn't master myself first, which is one of the reasons why I document the process. Documenting the process is not just giving the game. Documenting the process is giving you the proof. You know what I'm so saying? This, so this part, so this part, I understand and I agree with you on. But what I don't understand is why is why you will only offer one way to skin the cat. And now maybe this is just because it's your it's your own personal experience, and you refuse to put out something that you don't actually do a practice. Which I would never that. put out something that I have not done. Well, I can't I advise you on it. it. Like even the, the other day, like, the other day you said you had. The other day, you said you had an eight thousand dollar L, right? You misplaced something. Yeah, I, I did. I took an L. Uh, that was yesterday, bro. Do you know? Do you know what that does to most people in a real estate development? Mm -hmm. So either what you're telling people is, "Hey, ha, 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 I'm doing this, and you never will, and I'm gonna take over the world," mm -hmm. or you truly do believe on some level that because you are giving people the game on on security, uh, I, I, what is it? Oh, I forgot what it is. Uh, security. What is it? For which what? Which one? What you, what you do? What you do for a living? Oh, user experience, um, information. Yeah, so technology. you give you give you give people cybersecurity, right? You give people the game on cybersecurity. You give mm -hmm. people the game on on how to well, not really how to invest, but some of the proper plays to make if you're going to try to level up your finance game. You give people the plays on how to interview properly. You give people the, the game on everything, bro. But but it's all based off of what my real life chasm. experience is first. But there's a huge chasm from that to then I'm building a house for 250K. Like yeah, but you, you need to get the steps all in between. What is the step in between? I, I document between that. I talk him with that. Now. Okay, so if you don't have the cash right now, here's how you responsibly go get the cash. Here's mm -hmm. how you responsibly operate with that cash. And I don't here's think that you should leverage over, credit to do that. you don't over leverage yourself with that cash. Here's I don't, how think, you do it I don't right think that right. the average consumer should leverage credit to do that. I do not think so. But you think the average consumer can build a house for 150, 250? I think I think that an average off, consumer bro. can can work themselves into the position to be able to build the house if they leverage the steps that's happening before that. See, How listen, you, you, got, you, gotta remember, you gotta remember, Jay. You gotta remember, though, Jay. Right now. You gotta remember, though, Jay. Um, I'm 41 years old. This oh, is the first house that I'm building from scratch. At 41, I didn't tell people at 23 that they should be doing this. I didn't tell people at 25, I tell them that they can do it a lot faster than I did it, but they can do it. But you got to also understand the journey that came along me getting to the point to where I've gotten to in order to be able to do so. You know what I'm saying? It's not something that you, I don't, I don't, I tell everybody and everybody in this chat know and everybody that's in my Patreons know. My advice to people is stay down for 10 years. That's what I tell people. Stay down. Listen, give me 10 years. It may seem like a long time, but people do 10-year bids. You give me 10 years, you'll be able to do whatever you want to do for the rest of your life. And you can do it faster than I was able to do it because I made a lot of mistakes along the way. So at 41, now I'm in a position to be able to build houses cash with no bank financing, no partners, no nothing. But then at the same time, I'm not telling people that they can do it in two years or one year or three months or whatever like that. I'm not telling them the same thing that DJ Envy and them is telling them. I'm telling them there's steps along the way that get you to that 10 year process and you can do whatever you want to do for the rest of your life. But it's going to take discipline. It's going to take hard work. It's going to take some sleepless nights. It's going to take some sacrifice. It's going to take some not partying with friends. And so all of that has to be all encompassing. But I didn't do that junk overnight, and, and I'm still making mistakes, which is one of the reasons why it cost me $8,000, and then I'm documenting that along the way to show you, hey, listen, this is the mistake I made. This is how I'm going to be more efficient as a result of it. I know I'm going to make some mistakes. I know I'm going to overspend some money, but you can do it a little bit differently going, going that way. I'm not telling people that I'm not going to give them the shortcut, Jay. I'm never going to give them the shortcut. Ain't no shortcuts. Well, my, my, thing is, my thing is teaching people how to operate credit properly, properly. It's not a shortcut. It's just not. I do. It's I think not, so. it's, it's, it's just not. It's not a shortcut. The shortcut is when you tell somebody, hey, bro, you can go over to Navy Federal and get a $20,000 card. You can go to uh, 
uh, over to PenFed to get another 20, you could credit stack, right? And then what you do with that play, you go buy your house uh, on all those cards and then you flip it. And that's, that's the, you know. Now you know these people, come on, man. Come on, Jay. That's that. that that's the bullshit Jay. I'm talking about. No, Jay. This I would never, but see, and listen, I think that that's your lane. I would I would never tell anybody to do that. You know why? That's not my lane, bro. That's the lane that's out here. My lane is make sure you have your finances together, right? My mm -hmm. lane is your lane all the way up until we get to the point of actually utilizing credit. I agree with everything you say. But once you learn how to control your finances, once your bank account has enough money in it and you're able to operate without being under financial duress, there mm -hmm. is another level to this game. There is a like, level that tells you, there is a level that tells you if you are traveling, you better have you, hold on, this is my brand new wallet. If you're traveling, you better have you one of these. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I got one. Out to restaurants, it's in there. You better have one of these so that when you use one of these, you're but, getting all but, your But let me tell you the difference. See, the one thing, thing, the one thing that they, bro. the one thing that they don't tell you though, you showed the cars, right? You showed the gold American Express. You showed the plat one. I got it too, right? And I got the Chase Sapphire Reserve. But here's here's the difference. Here's here's the pro, here's the play though. The one thing they don't tell you is that first of all, for most of these cars, you're paying a five hundred dollar yearly fee, right? Absolutely, the I sell it. Second thing is interest rates. So they going out to dinner and they using these interest cars. It shouldn't even be a thing if you're operating. But it is rate. because it's the way that they market it to the people. In order to get them to use the cars in the, in the first place, see, you can do that though, Jay, because you have the resources. You have the resources. Your mistake, to be able to pay your it off. Mistake is believing that credit is a rich man's Hold game. On. Hold on, Jay. Nah. You got the resources to be able to justify getting that card in the first place, and being able to spend the money to actually be able to accumulate the amount of points that it's actually going to make it worth your while to even have the card, right? Because you need to you need to be at a threshold even to be able to make to justify. Spending that money and having that card in the first place, and you have the 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 life experiences to give you that responsibility to be able to justify having that card and being responsible enough to not to not even care about the the, the interest rate because you know you ain't never paying no interest on it. When I, when this little one over here is getting a Navy Federal right and they credit hacking and they went to the credit repair guy right and they never learn how to be responsible with their finances but what they did was they learned how to get more credit so they can buy more shit and then continue to fuck their life up they gonna be paying 29 percent interest they gonna be paying 23 percent interest because it wasn't marketed for us we the ones that's hacking it's marketed so that we can talk about it and then they can go and get it knowing that they're gonna be fucking their life up and then they're gonna be in debt then they're gonna have to file for bankruptcy possibly or they're gonna have to finesse the game or finesse the system i don't want them to go through that jay they and they you know it and they you know able to search. Okay, so let me ask you a question. You know in this, you feel, you feel let, just let, fine. Let me, let me ask you a question. If 10 people get the information and eight of them leverage it and do it the right way, but two of them fall behind on the eight ball and then they, got, they got to spend the next five years of their life preparing themselves to get back up to the starting line, was it worth the information? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not here for the many. I'm here for the one. No. No, no. If I can, if I no. can, if I can help somebody who's ready for the game, I cannot stop people. Let's let's just back it up. Do you use a weapon? Do you you, mm -hmm. say you stay you stay ready, right? Mm -hmm. You stay ready, right? I'm always ready. ready. All right, for sure. What about Rita? Is she does she stay ready? Yeah, she right here. Okay, who taught her? I did, but she didn't move. She never moved. But see, here's the key. Hold on, wait, wait, I, wait, 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 wait. Don't, okay, go on, ahead. I'm going to just answer the questions. I taught her. Are you I going, are you going to teach? Are you going to teach your daughter how to handle a weapon responsibly? Yeah, of course. Okay, now weapons are incredibly dangerous tools, mm -hmm. just like fire, right? Mm -hmm. However, if used responsibly, they can save your life. But you can't tell the mentality of a person who you're teaching how to use a weapon. I can't. You just have to hope that if you teach them the safety skills, that if you teach them to the respect nope. that weapon, you teach them to operate it responsibly, that they won't go out and do a mass deletion. Nope. You and, I, and I would never put it, I would no never even teach teaching them. somebody how to use fire or a weapon or anything of that nature, bro. You have to give people the tools. You, in order you, to make the decisions you left one part out, Jay. I'm not even teaching them or even entertaining the possibility of them having a weapon until they're ready for it. Right. 
But there are many people out there, Anton, that have to use a weapon that nobody or that have to learn how to use weapons of any kind. No, 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 no. You missed it. You missed it. Until I believe people's ability to get educated just because some might not get it right. Mm -hmm. Then you take away their power altogether. Nope, that's that's not true. It it takes 41 years to be 41 years old. It takes 16 years in order for you to even be able to get a license. It takes 21 years for you to even be able to get to the point. (coughs) Excuse me. You give me some credit. Years for you to be able to to be able to find it, financially apply for credit. But All but but, but you're missing it. It's my responsibility as their leaders and as the people the person that's covering them to put them in a position to be successful, not just give them the information. And so I determine based off of my own experience when they're ready to be able to get a weapon. But when you until, have until all then, your size and you're making that determination for all of them, man, time because time. these are my babies. They, they my babies. And 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 and, and, and listen, listen. My goal is not just to grow the platform. My goal is to be a beacon of of light for people that separate themselves from what's normal in society. I'm not here for. I'm not here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not here for the. I'm not here for nine billion people on the earth. I'm here for my babies, and so if one of them fall behind, then we got to stop the show and we got to pull them up. Right now, it's the same thing in my household. It's the same thing for the people that work for me, and it's the same thing for myself. I cannot, in any way, shape, or form, feel comfortable enough to see somebody go go out there with the information that I give them and kill themselves as a result of it. It's my responsibility to shepherd over my people to make sure that they are never, ever under duress, under under no circumstance, because I would rather you be normal than the possibility of you being abnormal and killing yourself as a result of it. And it's the same way with my wife. It's the same way with my daughter. And it's the same way with my employees. I will never put a gun in their hand. I will never put a gun in my daughter's hand. I will never give her the keys to the car until I believe that she's ready responsibly, mentally, uh, emotionally, that she understands the, the 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 that her brain is even capable of processing the importance of what it takes in order to defend yourself and what it does to a person. I can't do it. I respect I respect your position on that, bro. And I'm a, I'm gonna leave it at that because that's your position on that. But I do believe that you do have many many followers who are ready to operate it properly, and they're not getting all of the game from. They gonna have to wait. And if they really care that much, if they really care that much, <laughs> they would help their brother. That's why we got the Discord. Help your brother and sister get to where you are so that we all can go together because we're not moving unless everybody is in unison. We're not moving unless everybody is on the same page. And so as long as this one person is lagging behind, then that's the person that's going to slow up the whole bunch because we are no man left behind movement. Like, I'm not doing it. I don't. If I stayed at 200,000 subscribers on this platform for the rest of my life, I'm cool with it because the one thing that I'm always going to do is be responsible for the, for the way that I affect other people. And I can't let one person kill themselves in order to push the rest of the 99. I got you. I got you. Now, I know, because I know you got other people that's trying to come up. I know you have some questions on credit repair. And I saw mm-hmm. a lot of that in the chat that I was like, ooh, no. Nah. So let me ask you a question for you, bro. And maybe I can answer some other people's questions while I'm answering yours at the same time. Okay. What uh, You said you don't understand what credit repair is. Can you give me your understanding as far as you know? I don't, I have no understanding. I've never talked to anybody that was in a credit repair business. Okay. I I understand, I understand how to go in and challenge things that's on your credit. I understand, um, you know, when things are supposed to fall off. Why are you challenging things on your credit? This is the problem with credit repair. Mm -hmm. It's the why. It's not what people are doing. Well, it is what people are doing. But typically speaking, it's the why, right? People are challenging things because I need shit deleted from my credit report so I can go get this car, so I can go get this loan so i could do whatever right but well that's not, you also okay. challenge it you're supposed to challenge it based off of the inaccuracy so if it's not accurate so you do know credit that's repairs, that's right? that's the reason that you challenge it right right like I, so i'll give you an example i i financed i financed my hyundai tucson but mm-hmm. um i leased i leased the car but i paid for the entirety of the lease after the first payment right now for right. whatever reason hyundai doesn't continue to report after you paid off the entirety of the lease. They just leave it there. Right. But if you had that knowledge, you'd know. Well, I did have the knowledge. So I, you know, I already, cause I had bought a Hyundai before and I paid cash. I paid cash for the lease, the entirety of the lease. 
And so what I had to do was I had to challenge it after a couple months in order for them to actually report and give an accurate update of exactly where the payment status is on that particular vehicle. Right. So you're challenging the inaccuracy of it also, but I'm trying to understand why people need a credit repair service in order to actually manage their credit and, and make sure that you everything don't. is reported accurately. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't. People use credit repair for the same reason why they go to a steak restaurant or whatever the case is. They, they can do it themselves. And this is what I tell everybody. You can literally do credit repair yourself for the cost of the paper and the postage, right? But the reality of it is, is most people don't change their own oil, Anton. Most people don't cook their own steaks when they want a really mm -hmm. dope steak or when they want a dope experience like that. You pay for the convenience of having somebody else do it for you who may know the bureau's information a little bit better, who may know how to deal with the creditors or the collection companies a little bit better. Now, here's my stance on this. Uh, I believe firmly that 99.9% .9 of credit repair professionals out there can't even read a credit report. <laughs> so, you know, what they're doing simply is they will have you do things that go against your best interests, like filing an FTC fraud claim and filing identity theft and things like that, which will get information deleted from your credit file temporarily. Um, even folks who sign up for credit repair under the guise of I'm paying for things to get deleted from my credit file is absolutely wrong. I tell every I'll tell you like I tell everybody else who I speak to about this. I'm not going to guarantee you shit in the form of a deletion mm -hmm. or in the form of a credit or improvement because those are two things that are not in my power. However, what I can do is look at your credit. Jay. Back. Yeah, you there? Your, your camera had one yeah, out for a phone call. A phone call came in. But uh, oh, okay. <clears throat> what I can do is I can look at your credit report. I can see what's not being reported properly. I can see what's been re-aged, which is against the FCRA. Mm -hmm. um, I can actually have you send me in collection letters, which might not be, which might be going against the FDCPA, the, uh, the, uh, the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. All of these things are here to protect the consumer, right? right. Your duty is to pay your bills, mm -hmm. pay your bills. But even sometimes when you do that, it doesn't get reported properly. So if you don't pay your bills, their job is to collect in a responsible manner. Their job is to report that debt to the bureaus in a responsible manner. I am of the uh, uh, of the uh, of the uh, mindset where I don't care what happens with you because you ain't pay your shit. I don't care what happens with them because they're not doing their due diligence and responsibility by reporting everything completely, fairly, accurately, um, and verifiably. Right. right. There is a there is responsibilities on both sides of this thing. I am the one who is in the middle. So so there are. You don't deserve to have that shit removed from your credit report. And I'm not attempting to do that that way. So, so there, there are. Okay, but okay. So I understand it from your perspective because you're, but you, the difference between you and what I hear other people doing as far as when they talk about credit repair is that you're a beacon of education and that you're helping people also to understand the difference between accurate reporting, what the responsibility is, uh, you know, from the consumer versus what the responsibility is from the lender. Um, as far as these debt collection agencies and everything like that, your level of knowledge and insight also warrants for you, in my opinion, not to even be referring to it as credit repair. Right. I don't even think I, that you could, I, don't, I don't even think that you, what the hell is happening? What are you doing over here, dog? Dog, this is the new Apple software because I'm doing this on my iPhone or whatever. As uh, whatever. just real quick, bro, when you when I saw you playing with that thing, bro, I got a picture of what you actually be doing <laughs> offline when you when you like reset. I could not stop laughing, bro. I was uncontrollable over here. But continue. I don't. I don't think that you can label it credit repair with the level of information and the insight that you're giving because that's not what you're putting out there. You're not putting out credit repair. You're putting out information that educates consumers on how it is that they need to be actually participating based off of what the laws are and how we need to be holding companies responsible for A, how they report, B, whether or not they're taking advantage of the consumers, and then C, whether <laughs> and then C, whether or not they're giving out proper and accurate information. That's not credit repair. Right. What I... So... I mean I, here, here, here's the reason why I still consider it credit repair, because if you are being held accountable for something you shouldn't be held accountable for, or you're being held accountable for it in a way that you shouldn't be held accountable for, we all agree children should be disciplined, correct? Yeah, but correct. if my son say something and I just sock him in his mouth because that's what I feel like doing, that's an incorrect way of disciplining my son, right? 
So there is a way to collect debt responsibly. There is a way to report debt and negative items responsibly. Right. The reason why I call it credit repair is because if it's not being done right, your credit report is in fact being injured. Your chances of being financed for whatever reason, whether we agree with being financed or not, are being injured, right? So when you go in and you're able to address those things in a way that brings it back to a space where it is fully functional in the way it's supposed to be, it has been repaired. It mm. is still repaired. Now, unfortunately, okay. the name credit repair has gotten a terrible. Yeah, it has gotten it. Right? Right. But it is still that, bro. I'm still living in a space. I'm still occupying a space that I have to live in, bro. This is what it is. Yeah. However, I am a whole different breed when it comes to this. Because you have people out there charging $1,500, $3,000, $5,000, guaranteeing things that they simply don't have the ability to guarantee. Why you got somebody like me over here building software that will do it responsibly and not charge you a damn thing as long as you have credit monitoring? So, why, but why wouldn't you? Way. Why wouldn't you charge? What about that? You providing a service and it's taking your time. Why wouldn't you charge? Because I own the credit monitoring software, bro, and you should have that anyway. And you have to have the credit monitoring in order to be able to challenge the items effectively. So, yeah. I'm not going to take money from you that I don't have to take. It's already going to cost you money to uh, print, stamp, and mail the letter certified. It's already going to cost you money to have the credit monitoring service. So why don't I take a piece of what you have to have and don't charge you for what I don't have to charge you for? If well, more people approach but see, the way that I look at credit is much different than how other people look at credit, right? How, how people that have resources look at credit and use credit is much different, right? right. So like, like I'll give you an example. I would never use credit to go and just randomly buy uh, a pair of jeans, right? Unless... You know, I got to say Chase Sapphire Reserve or whatever, so on and so forth, right? I look at credit as an opportunity for you to reduce your taxes. That's fair. That's it. Okay. Or, or, or to, if I have enough resources to where I can let... You're still gamifying it. You're still gamifying it, right? I if am. Don't, I am. If, but if, it's if, different, though. If you, but if you don't have good credit, you can't play that game, bro. So you Listen, can't when you, like when you have resources... And don't teach you how to get when there. you have resources... It's not hard to have good credit. That's that's number one. Oh, bro, you will be shocked at how many doctors and look, look, yeah, but they're not managing their resources. Exactly. That I have, bro, that don't have a clue. But here, here's the other side of it, right? So, credit for me is cheaper than for me to spend my own money. You're right. And this is and this is why. First of all, it's easier when Mark Zuckerberg uses credit. It's not because he needs credit, right? I'm going to use an extreme example. He's leveraging credit because he doesn't want to remove his equity in a position of a company and then have to pay the taxes on it. So instead, he uses that equity position in order to get a very, very cheap loan because it's basically guaranteed, right, so that he can reduce his tax burden. And then at the same time, it doesn't cost him more in order to buy that property that he really wants. So he's using it because it's cheaper. He doesn't cheaper. have to make tax payments on the loan payments. But he's using it differently. Correct. He's using it differently because he already has the money. And so when rich people are using using credit, but my point is, is when rich people use credit, they don't need credit. The only time that you're supposed to leverage credit is if you don't need it, but you're using it as a tool in order to prevent yourself from giving out more money, either, either A, to the federal government, or B, you can make more money as a result of keeping your money in your pocket. But the other side of that equation is that when most people, 99% of the population, are not using credit because they don't need it, they're using credit because it's an opportunity for them to buy things that they don't need in order to impress people that don't give a fuck about them. It's different. Until they come into a person like me, where I teach them how to, where I teach them how to build that muscle before I tell them to go lift a heavy brick or a heavy boulder, right? What you're doing is saying, hey, once you get to a big boulder, just lift it. You good? No, what that's not what I'm is, saying. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying, saying is, yeah, true. you're talking about Zuckerberg and all these but, people. What I'm saying is, like what that, I'm bro. saying you is, taxes, but you can't get there if you don't know how no, to get to that listen, point and exercise that in the first place. If it was me, let me tell you what I would do. If it, if, if if I'm in, in control, I wouldn't even allow people under thirty to even be able to use credit. Okay, I agree with that. Okay. I wouldn't even. I would. I would force if I want a utopian society. If I'm controlling, if I'm the dictator of this utopian society, I'm not allowing for people to use credit before they're 30 years old, 35 years old, because 
I believe that you need to put in the work in order to build the assets and be responsible and show yourself worthy of it before you, you can have access to it. The problem with what society is that we're run, we run based off of interest. And so we're not a country that actually builds anything anymore. And so as a result of it, we make the majority or regenerate the majority of our income out of thin air as a result of the payments that come along with marketing people for a 30 year mortgage and so on and so forth. Right. But if I want to build a utopian society, I first have to educate people and then I secondly have to put them in a position to actually have resources to not need it in order to leverage it properly. So I wouldn't even let people get access to credit until they are above 30 years old because then I know that you've built up enough resources in order to use it properly and your brain is fully developed and you're in a position where uh, you understand it responsibly and then you're able to leverage it a little differently. So I'm, I look at it a completely different way. I don't look at it the you same way. You don't, you don't. You don't. You don't talk to enough people about this, bro. I, I can tell because that's probably you're true. Basing it, you're, you're, you're basing it based on age and not financial experience. Um, there's a lot of 35, 40, 45 year olds walking around here, bro, that can barely turn on a light switch. I'm just telling you like it is, bro. I talk to some people and I'm like, how did you make it out of the womb? How were you the one that got through? And so, like, when 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 you're dealing with that, bro. You have to treat the 18 year olds like a baby. You have to treat the 30 year olds like a baby. You got to treat mm -hmm. the 50 year old like a baby and walk them through it. And so what I'm saying is you're talking about. But only because they've been them. they've been indoctrinated to do the same thing since they was 20. And I, they just I came hard and did it. Your recommend, I want to adjust your utopian society recommendations, although we live in a very different world that is far mm -hmm. from utopian. Dystopian, if you will, at this point. Um, it's not based on age. You would like for those who have the money to lose the discretionary income to play this game. Those would only be the those would be the only ones who you would allow. What discretionary income are they making? Well, I mean, you have to have enough income, like you said, enough income where you're not living a distressed life. Where if you do buy something with a credit card, you can actually pay that shit off immediately, right? Mm -hmm. So that there is no interest involved. But however, in your dystopian society, credit cards wouldn't exist at all because if they worked that way. Credit card companies will be broke. Correct. But anyway, man, they I should be broke. The way that I'm listen, they have <laughs> They're basically giving me tens of thousands of dollars every single year, and they're doing that because they know that they're gonna make a whole lot more money off the people that's not actually doing the thing in their own best interest. Sure. Credit card companies. And that twenty nine percent interest are giving us the rewards, bro. Your boys best said it best. I, I, what do you say? I, I forgot what that. What did that super chat say? Something about until I found out I was a reward point. I like rich people until I found out you guys are paying out there. Yeah. So credit card money. companies essentially shouldn't exist, but it's just a marketing tactic for the bank in order to make more money. But in a society where the ship has sailed and it's already too late, it will never go back into the harbor. What do you do with people didn't grow? And see, that's where I'm at with it. Well, I'm not trying to fix everybody. I'm only trying to fix my tribe. Right. You're only trying to fix your tribe the way you want to fix your tribe. Correct. That's fair. And if they want that game, they're going to have to get it my way. Otherwise, they can go out there and do it the way that everybody else is telling them. Big facts. Big facts. I appreciate you, bro. All right, big dog. I appreciate you, Jay. That was a good conversation, what bro. Doing, what is that? So that's a great conversation. I love that. It was awesome, man. It was awesome. I appreciate you for letting me have it, man. All right, bro.